This is a Hemiway Buffang motor, and I'm going to convert it today from censored to censorless. And I'm going to explain why would I do that, because this is a functional motor, there's no problem with it. But I have very, very good reasons to do it. Here's uh, the first reason. Um, the connector over here at the end, you cannot change the cassette here in the back because the connector is too big and you cannot fit a key. This is the normal Shimano key and then it just doesn't fit over it. So you have to cut the cable every time you want to do that. Even the nut, if you cross, cross thread it, you have to do that because you can run it over the connector. Another reason that I'm doing that is because you have the nine wires over here, what happens is that they have to skimp on the quality of the wires or the thickness of the wire that goes into the motor. So this harness, gets very, very hot, very, very hot, and it melts. And when it melts, it makes a short, and then you're left in the middle of nowhere with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the space that the six little wire take for communication, and I'm gonna add three thick copper wires only. How is that gonna affect the motor? Well, not that much. Um, it's gonna run a little bit rougher, but then it's gonna be a lot more reliable. So that's the whole point of it. Also, these motors are prone to failure for the sensors inside the motor. And if you have a controller that cannot run them with sensorless, then you have a big problem. These are called hall sensors, and they, what they do is they read the po positioning of the motor and they communicate it back to the controller if it's a censored controller. It makes the motor run a little bit not as rough, but then they have the tendency to overheat and burn. And then once they cannot be read by the motor anymore, then they just cause problems. So even though this one is good, I've tested it, I'm just gonna get rid of them. Also, another problem that I have with this Buffang Hemiway motor is that this connector overheats and it just melted together. So I'm just gonna get rid of the another uh, problem that could occur. Basically what I'm gonna do, even though I just fixed this one recently, I've decided uh, after that I don't want it. So I'm gonna cut the zip ties out. Be able to fit them all through this little hole over here what they had to do is they had to skimp on insulation on them. So as soon as they overheat a little bit, they melt and they short in the side and then you have a problem. You see even here, it's uh, already melting out and it's, uh, it's just touching other stuff in there. So I'm gonna replace them with uh, copper wires, not metal wires, they're also metal wires. So I'm gonna replace them with copper wires which are better uh, conductivity and they're solid core, which uh, makes them thinner, uh, more powerful. They were ready for 25 amps. So here it is, we're cutting this board out. Yeah, I had enough with this thing. It, uh, it, it just keep breaking and there's really no reason for it. And with the wire out, now we have access to the key, uh, to the tool that goes and takes this uh, sprocket out so we could put a bigger sprocket on. So this is a perfect example. Why am I doing this? You see these wires, they're, they're, they melted together. So they, they are, they're cut, but they just melted together inside the inside the harness. So basically they would have been one step away from a short. The blue markings on this one. So basically the, the harness from the blue cable basically went to the yellow and just melted together. Also, we don't need this piece of plastic over here. So we're gonna take this plastic out. So these are the wires that I'm gonna use. These are 12 gauge. I wish I had them in different colors, but I don't. So I'm gonna have to mark one of these. So make sure that I know which one goes where. Here they are, they went in. This is the absolute maximum gauge that you could fit through this uh, connector over here this is n there's no more room over there and especially here at the bottom where it's like a little bit of a turn this is a maximum gauge that you could fit in so 12 gauge copper core this should do it finally must manage to put everything together these are compression connectors i've chose compression connectors because it's very very hard to connect a solid with a um, split wire so this works really really well and there they are side by side. This is the one that sensors failed also. So this is the second motor that the sensors failed on it. And uh, they just melt inside there. I'm not sure where they are. That's, that's where they are. See that little thing over there? They melt or somehow they malfunction. So here's the final product. Uh, got the uh, connectors in. Now I connect them with this quick disconnects. These are the ones that they use for electrical system. This will hold just fine. There is no heat dissipated into it. I just tested it out for about five miles. So it works great. Uh, twist the throttle and there it is. So the, the, the motor works great. I'm very, very happy with this outcome. And then I'm gonna upgrade the other motor exactly in the same manner and then we're good to go. And then uh, if I have to swap the motors in the middle of a drive or something like that, all I have to do is just uh, take these things out and put a new motor in and good to go. This is the second motor um, that I'm gonna rebuild. Some people ask me, how did the zip ties that I put in hold up the board? 
This was the board that I just cut out. So I'm upgrading these motors to sensorless. But for those people that ask how the zip tie held up, they actually held up, they didn't melt. But that um, duct tape that I've used to uh, um, keep the wires separated, they did melt. So as you can clearly see that the duct tape really, really got really, really hot and it uh, melted. But actually it melted a good way. We kind of like wrapped around the thing and it just holds really, really well. So that's not a big deal, except that now I have to work on it, so I have to figure out how to take it off. Maybe I have to burn it off. But I also have an operated controller, so for those people that are saying, uh, oh, I want to do that for my bike, well, you have to operate the controller also. So uh, it is what it is, but now it's, it's bulletproof.